I've got a bundle of cables and plugs and adapters in the boot of my new EV. What are they all for? Do I need them at all? Well, these are common questions. Dave takes it on, looks first at whether you actually need them. Every EV comes with a bundle of cables and connectors included. For most people, they never use them and probably are not needed. All but the smallest 7kW AC public chargers have tied or tethered cables, meaning the cable and plug are on the charger itself. All you need to do is open the charger port, remove the plug from the DC charger and plug it in. Really simple. Those cables are not needed if you always charge a piece of public DC chargers. If you use public AC chargers, these almost never come with a cable. Instead, all they have is a socket. In your pack, you'll find a blue cable. It has a very similar plug on either end, but sometimes they can be different. If they are different, the plug will only fit into one of the sockets. You cannot get it the wrong way round. Plug one end into the AC charger socket and the other into your EV charging socket. It's that simple. It gets complex then, because you'll then probably need an app to activate the charging session, but plugging, plugging it in is really easy. As a guide, the 7kW charge is generally rated at 32 amps and will provide around 21 miles of charge for every hour it's plugged in. So to add a 100 mile range will therefore require about 4 or 5 hours. Now beware, some public AC chargers are actually as low as 3 kilowatts at 16 amps, and these will charge nearer 3 miles an hour. A full charge could easily take a whole day. Also with your EV you'll have another cable, usually grey or black, and usually complete with a number of plugs and adapters. One of these will be a plug to go into whatever socket you have in your home. In the UK that will be a 3 pin 13 amp socket. This will normally be quite a short cable with a strange socket on the end. This is done so that a single charger cable can be used anywhere, say Europe, UK or America, with just a change of the adapter. It saves them money. Find a socket to plug into. If you keep your EV in the drive, the best is a waterproof outdoor socket near to your car. If one is not available, then any indoor socket can be used, but beware, first make sure the socket is not exposed to the rain or the weather, and make sure also that it is not going through a window which will need to be left partially open all night. If you have a garage, drive in there and charge. It is not recommended to use an extension cable or reel. Ones you buy at your local DIY store are usually designed for occasional low power use. Hedge trimmer, drill, power washer. If you use them continuously for hours charging your car at a high rate of current, there is a very real risk of the cable overheating and catching fire. If you must use an extension lead, make sure it has adequate capacity and uncoil the whole cable so they can all be exposed to cool fresh air, not bunched up inside a case with no ventilation. Charging from a 3-pin plug will get you uh, about 3 kilowatts, but only at 16 amps. So you can expect around 3 to 4 miles range per hour plugged in, so it really is a slow trickle charger. However, if you plug in when you get home, say 6 o'clock, and don't need your car till 8 o'clock next morning, you can get up to 14 hours of 4 miles per hour and 64 miles of range each night. The average UK motorist drives less than 30 miles per day, so it works for many people. The next video in the series looks at what you need if you do drive more than 60 miles per day, when 3 to 4 miles per hour charging is simply not enough. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, please click the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. I'm Dave.